it is really hard to find a mega cab dually and a crew cab long bed dually together. But not only did I find two of the hardest trucks, I found one of the hardest trim levels to find in a dually and I found a night edition dually with the blacked out alcohol wheels at the same time. I'm probably going to go play the lottery today because I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm really going to win. But this video is really about comparing the cabs. Now I did a video like this in the past. The only problem with that video was I forgot to mention a few things. So we're going to revisit this a second time around. So this should be pretty good. So be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over the benefits of the Mega Cab Dually, and then I'll show you the benefits of the Crew Cab Long Bed Dually. Now, the first one we have to go over, and it's kind of controversial for some of you guys. So I'm going to do it anyways because my channel is I love the overall design of the Mega Cab Dually. I do truly believe that this is the best looking truck on the market. When you lift this truck or level it, however you want to do it, and when you put 37s on this thing with these wheels, I mean, you can go with a 20 inch wheel, but I think the 17s are fine. It just hits so much differently on a short bed dually. It really does. It looks amazing. And that is the first benefit in my book. So let's get down to business here. So why would you pick a short bed dually? That is a hard question to answer because you lose function with this truck. But here's how you offset that by just being smart. As you guys can see, this bed already has a fifth wheel hitch and a fifth wheel prep package. What I strongly recommend on this is skipping this whole setup here. So this truck does have a max tow prep package. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to skip it. Now, don't be angry, don't be upset. You can still get some of the other options that would make this max tow, like the 410 axle, the air suspension, etc., etc. But these two features, I would skip, and here's why. When you think about how far up this fifth wheel hitch is, right? Think about your fifth wheel being about right here if you use this hitch and your cap's gonna probably be about right here. When you go to make a 90 degree turn, this setup is going to really restrict you on how far you can turn in. So in other words, if you do wanna make a U-turn or if you do wanna make a tight turn to back your trailer up, it's gonna be a lot harder to do so. So I strongly recommend that you just skip this setup altogether because if you do some research, you can get a BMW turnover ball. And if you install that system, you do have the option to get a offset ball. If you do use like a hitch similar to mine, I have a fifth wheel and I use a Reese goose box. And what happens is I can use a goose ball with, without having to use a big hitch. Now, in the event that you don't want to use that system, what you can do is you can also use a slider hitch, which would allow you to make those 90 degree turns in the event that you do need to turn around or you do need to park your fifth wheel in a tight spot. So those are just two options that you have in the event that you would like to do so. So although that may sound like a negative, it's a good solution to be able to still use this setup without having to worry about hitting your cap because of course that would suck. Now, what is the next benefit of the Mega Cap Dually besides looking so beautiful? The next benefit obviously is gonna be the cab size. A lot of times people who are towing big trailers, fifth wheels, whatever, their kids grow up. You know, most people start off towing fifth wheels when they're, or travel trails when their kids are small. But as they get older, you know, they become teenagers, they start complaining about the size of the cab. Well, the Mega Cab does fix that for you, and here's why. Oh, I gotta clean all this out here. Hold on one second. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you do have a predominantly flat floor surface here in the middle. You can kind of see it better there. So for me, I'm six foot one. If I sat in this middle seat, I could easily sit here pretty comfortably. So the hump is not awkwardly high. So I think that this is a good setup 
And if you were to compare it with the crew cab, the hump is a lot bigger. The other feature that you have is the fact that you can recline the seat. So if you do have older kids and you plan on going pretty far for travel, you can add an additional comfort function with this mega cab. Now you cannot do that inside of the crew cab with HDs. The other function is storage. Now, most people know you have storage behind the seat, but some people do not know about this storage. There is a ton of storage under this seat. Do you see that? There's a ton of storage. So you can put your gun bag down there or you can put it out back here and they do give you a small storage compartment right here not that deep not that long but enough to maybe put like a hitch inside of there a small one and let's not forget that even if you pull the seat down it does remember where you put it at i love that they did that that's something they didn't have to do but they did it and remember if you need a flat floor surface this seat does go all the way down so if you want to put something tall inside of this rear seat you can do that i'm going to put this seat down too so you guys can see them fully flat so here are both seats completely flat you can easily sleep someone back here or you can put something tall or if you have a big dog and you want to keep them comfortable you can easily let them sit back here and have all the space in the world now let's see i'm gonna try to see if i can set up my camera if, if i were to lay down here me and my wife could easily easily lay down back here i would have to spoon her to death but we could live we could definitely do it so if i were to lay down i'm six foot one and I would have to curl up a little bit, but I could easily sleep back here pretty comfortably. Hopefully you guys can see my head too. If I was a lady like this, I could easily sleep really comfortably in the back of this truck. And a second person would, would probably sleep here. So if you're traveling with a buddy, you guys would have to spoon like I said. So it would be kind of awkward the next day, but it is possible. The other benefit of this truck is that it is shorter than the long bed. Um, my truck I believe is 23 feet long or something like that or it's like less than 23 feet long So all you would need is like a 24 by 24 Garage easily it'll fit this truck. No problem now if you look at that long bed You're gonna probably need a 25 by 25 for it to fit comfortably inside the garage So just keep that in mind Now this next one might be controversial when it comes down to a benefit, but I think there's some value add with the short bed dually you don't see these a lot and I do strongly believe once Ram goes away from this cab because I'm sure in the fifth gen when it comes out the true fifth gen that is I think that they're not going to have a need for this mega cab anymore so I think that there's going to be a lot of people looking for a mega cab number one but number two you won't find a lot of them with the duallys I rarely see these trucks on the road and when I do it's like seeing a Ferrari for me you know, I always get excited. And my wife actually can tell that, man, it looks, it looks kind of cool. Because like, my wife, she could care less about trucks. So for her to actually be able to point out that there's something different about it, it's pretty cool because it has a shorter bed. But apart from that, that's the only real benefits of the Mega Cab. You know, you have that shorter bed, which gives it a shorter stance. It should also make a tighter turning radius with a shorter wheelbase in comparison with the long bed. And yeah, if I missed anything, be sure to tell me in the comment section. Now let's go ahead and get to that dually over there with the longer bed. Man, so where do we begin? Let's start at the back like we did on this truck. Now when you think about the long bed, having a long bed means a lot of things. Number one, if you want to add a toolbox or a external fuel tank, you have more than enough space in this bed to do so. And also, hey, if you do find a truck with a fifth wheel prep package in it, it doesn't matter because you have the clearance to be able to make a 90 degree turn without it having to hit the cab of your truck. So those two benefits alone allow you to really be able to use this bed for its purpose, which is to haul and carry you know, big things. Now, last time I did this video comparing these two trucks, I did not have my tape measure. Today I do. So we're gonna use this line here. 
Um, I like using this one here. I think this is a good one. So 97 inches is about right here. And let's go up top here. When you think about the space you have from the front of the bed to, I like this area right here, so about right here. You have about 34 and a half inches of space before you, you know, start to get too close to where this puck system is. I'm gonna measure the same way in the other truck too, but that's about 34 and a half inches there. So let's take a look at it on the Mega Cap Duel. Now this bed is 75 inches uh, where you pretty much would cut it off at. So the dually was 97 inches. So look how much space you had between these two trucks. Now climbing up, man, I'm getting too for this. Now climbing up here, let me just fix this really quickly. You have, man, you only really have 15 inches of space versus 37 and a half. This is where, what, actually, what was it on the, these, on the dually? Hold on one second, hold on. Sorry, you had 34 and a half. So I would say 15 and a half here is all you would really have left over once you get too close to this. And on the dually, the long bed, you're all the way here. So definitely a large difference between how much space you have before you come into contact with this. Now let's talk about this one option that I did not mention on this truck in the last video. Now I mentioned that there is one reason why I would pick the long bed over this truck and it's a really important one. Because I do travel full time my fifth wheel sometimes, I like the idea of the 50 gallon tank option. This truck actually has a 50 gallon tank option. Um, you can see that it pretty much ends off where the axle is. So this is a big tank guys, it's a 50 gallon tank. And if you want that, it's not that expensive. Let's take a look at the price on it real quickly. Now I don't know if you guys can see it, but that 50 gallon fuel tank is $295. If you were to get an aftermarket solution for this, it would literally be like a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars not including taxes not including insulation and you lose the function of the miles till empty too on your computer so i strongly recommend just getting it from the factory if you can and you have the option to put an additional 50 gallon tank in the bed because you have the space that's 100 gallons of diesel in the mega cab dually you cannot get that option you only can get that option with a long bed truck. And of course, as you know, this truck does not have that option. Now, this cab is roomy enough because this is a big truck, obviously, right? One benefit they have is you do have a 6040 bench out back. So the seats do flip up. They also give you these trays that you can pop up if you need to to get a solid floor surface and this is sturdy enough too to allow one person to sleep back here and another piece of the pie is you do have storage on this side as well let me show that to you really quickly here's the storage on this side on that side you do have a subwoofer and believe it or not you do have a little bit of storage under the seat right here now it's not deep it's not tall you probably can put an umbrella back here you probably can put a like a receiver hitch out back but not a lot of heavy big stuff can really go back here or it could be somewhat heavy but it just can't be big and if that isn't enough you do have these in-floor storage compartments and hey some people use these as little ice boxes too if you do go to the beach or something like that you have one on each side too before I show you the weight capacities for these trucks, I want to show you some of the information online for measurements, wheelbases, things like that. So let's go ahead and look at it really quickly. On the left side here, I do have the crew cab eight foot box and then I have the mega cab on this side. Uh, disregard these two trucks on the, the right hand side, but as far as the exterior length goes, it's gonna be 260 for the eight foot box, 249, for the mega cab exterior body width is 79.4 it's gonna be the same thing for the mega cab now as far as the height goes 
looks like the mega cab has about 10 inches of height over the eight foot crew cab as you would expect the wheelbase is going to be longer for the eight foot bed crew cab by nine inches basically and here's the front track it's going to be the same rear track it's going to be obviously the same too now as far as the turning radius goes i did show this to you in a video but it's a little bit tighter with the mega cab now as far as the pickup bed goes as you guys can see you lose a lot of uh, length with that now as far as the minimum width i'm not sure how they measure minimum width but the minimum width is a little bit lower on the mega cab uh, six foot four bed now pick a box maximum width you guys can see you do lose some of that width with that shorter bed so just keep that in mind and then of course cargo volume is a big difference there and and just take a look at some of the other things here some of this is for the interior you do pick up some interior space with the mega cap so uh, be sure to go online check out some of these dimensions too and uh, if you like just pause it and let's get back to the video I did a video on both of these trucks so you, most of you guys probably have already seen these numbers but no matter how you slice it both trucks are going to have the exact same numbers so this truck is going to have a 6,000 pound gross axle weight rating in the front the rear is 9,750 pounds with a 14,000 pound GVWR now this truck, even though these trucks are not the same, you can see here, 5,102 pounds is the capacity for this long bed dually. Now if you look at it for the mega cab, you're going to have the same gross axle weight ratings and the same gross vehicle weight rating, but this number is going to be slightly lower because of the mega cab configuration. So 4,956 pounds. So when you compare the cabs of these trucks, this truck is a lot heavier. Now the bed, beds don't really have a lot of weight to them. They're a little bit more hollow in comparison with them with a cab. So if you do need that payload capacity, you're gonna wanna have to jump over to this truck here. Now keep in mind, this truck does have a 50 gallon fuel tank too. So that's gonna weigh something too, especially when it's filled up. But on that note guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.